Welcome back. Most of us of a certain age remember our parents telling us to finish everything on our plate because there were starving children overseas, and that usually worked the first couple of times. But we're going to talk tonight about children in this country who don't get enough to eat in this land of plenty, where by some estimates, between our home schools and restaurants, 40% of all edible food in this country goes to waste. One very large company with 1,900 restaurants nationwide, places where we've all eaten, decided to do something about this. Chelsea Clinton found they really are making a difference in the lives of people who need it most. Do you come every day? Do you all come every day? School's out for the day in Seminole County, Florida, and nearly 200 students have come here to the Boys and Girls Club after school program. <laughs> But before they do their homework, they're hungry. Here in Central Florida, one in four kids doesn't get enough to eat at home. You good? You're welcome for your food. Programs like this one only get enough money from the government for a small snack, like a granola bar. But these kids need more, and they get more. What's the yellow stuff called? Today, it's steak, chicken, potato salad, and corn. Do you know where the food comes from? It comes from this restaurant. They have a bunch of food. They give it to us. They donate it. The girls are right. Years ago, much of this food would have ended up in the garbage. Not anymore. There's no reason to throw all that food out. There's a much better use for it. Drew Madsen is the president and chief operating officer of Darden Restaurants, which owns such well-known chains as Red Lobster, Olive Garden and Longhorn Steakhouse. In the past, thousands of pounds of unserved food were thrown away each night. But back in 2004, Madsen heard that some of his managers were donating that food to local charities. I think that's when the light went on and we said, wow, this is a big opportunity. We can't keep doing what we're doing. There must be a better way. So the Darden team decided to make it a company-wide policy. Now in every Darden restaurant, there's a system in place to donate excess food. Like this chicken marsala. The customer changed her mind before it was served. So it's bagged, tagged, and frozen for donation. Other times, the process is more elaborate. Steak trimmings that would have been thrown away are now cooked and packaged ready for pickup. When we were in some of the kitchens um, over the last couple days, we saw how much time it takes for the staff to follow the safety procedures to ensure the food is properly stored, frozen. This is clearly not without a cost of time and space and energy for Darden. Would it be cheaper to just throw it all away? Yes, it would be faster and cheaper, but this Darden Harvest Program really fits into the broader vision of what we want Darden to be. The restaurants couldn't do it without the help of local food banks. Here in Central Florida, it's a second harvest truck that arrives to pick up the unserved food. Jay Hanna is the driver. This is about 25 pounds of lasagna, wow. and I collected oh, about 40 pounds of soup today. So it's a good diversity of food. Yes. Darden has donated 53 million pounds of food to date. That's enough to feed the entire population of nearby Kissimmee, Florida for a whole year. As the economy has weakened, need has grown, especially at places like the after-school program. When you visited the Boys and Girls Club, you know, what did they say to you about eating steak and eating lobster, foods yeah. that they probably don't yeah. see that often? Well, they can't thank us enough, certainly. Uh, the kids ask us when we're going to have it again, typically. <laughs> that's and, a good sign. And, and that's a good sign. Not just a good sign, but donated food from Darden is a real solution, according to Second Harvest Food Bank President Dave Krepko. They have a real corporate conscience for the less fortunate, and then there are business benefits to it as well. Um, you know, they get a tax deduction for the donated foods. Why do you think more restaurant chains don't do this? type of work? I think it might be a combination of things. Maybe there's a lack of awareness of the business benefits and how easy we can make it for them to do this, to do this great work um, because there's always surplus food. Not only for children, but adults as well. Here at the Orlando Union Rescue Mission, tonight's dinner comes from Red Lobster. Okay. Uh. It's a welcome sight for Juan Rocha. A year ago, Juan says he and his wife Yachty were down to their last $130. Now, they live at the mission with their two children, 
where all of their meals come from donated food. And so how does it make you feel knowing that your kids can have a nutritious meal? It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Very mm -hmm. blessing. Every day is a different meal. Every day is a different meal. Do you have favorites? Us? Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore? No. no. Why, why do you say that? Because before, um, I was picky, you could say. Now it's like whatever I can have in front of me. Because it's, it's a blessing how it play at my table. Now I appreciate what I have. Yesterday at the rescue mission, um, we met a family and they shared with us that without the rescue mission and the food that Darden provides, they would be eating out of trash cans. Yeah. And how They're does it delighted. make you feel? And, and so it makes us very proud. It's just fantastic. It really is. Chelsea Clinton here with us in the studio. I learned today that something that allowed this to happen, a law, full disclosure, signed by your father, uh, called the Good Samaritan Law, heretofore restaurants were held liable if the food passed down, cost of good intentions, made people sick, even at a rescue mission. And thanks to the Good Samaritan Law, which was passed in 1996, that's no longer the case. So restaurant chains, family-owned restaurants, are protected from civil and criminal liability, provided they take the trouble, as we saw Darden does in all of its restaurants every night, to package the food, prepare the food, freeze the food, to ensure that it is safely distributed to those who need it most. Um, which is terrific. And we should also give companies, other companies by name credit. Who else is in this game of the group restaurant owners? Well, the largest is Yum Brands after Darden. So Pizza Hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken, similarly in their restaurants every night follow the same methodology and also given away millions of pounds of food. Now, anecdotally, you're sitting there when you're uh, uh, talking to these families and the providers, the people who run these facilities, you learned, if I'm not mistaken, that demand is going nowhere but up right now. In Central Florida alone, the number of food insecure families has more than doubled since 2009. There are more than 750,000 people in Central Florida alone who don't know with confidence where their next meal is coming from. Right, that's a and that's a big, big, a staggering big part figure. Of life. Chelsea, thank you. Thank as you, Brian. Always.